we've built a whole new social explorer from ground up and we've re rebuilt everything. I would describe it as a data visualization website that allows you to quickly and effortlessly visualize demographic data, population data on a map. It's sort of a very pretty and cool mapping website. So Social Explorer is really the premier online mapping source that is available. It contains data all the way back to 1790 to the very first U.S. Census that was ever available, um, which is a very unique feature. Most sites, not even the U.S. Census Bureau, has that information available at such depth and such detail, which is a huge benefit for our users. The thing that, that's really good about Social Explorer is you can get a lot of data about a given location at a, lo at a small area uh, over time without spending an inordinate amount of time putting together the data yourself. For a person who is interested in geographic questions but doesn't necessarily specialize in geographic questions, Social Explorer has been a total godsend. In contrast to the Census website, it's pretty easy to use even if you're not a kind of GIS you know, guy or girl. Um, so I think that the, the usability is huge both for researchers and also for students. This allows them to actually engage with like real data, real research questions um, in a context and format that even undergraduates can deal with. I think the kind of maps that Social Explorer uh, has, has you make are um, just so obviously useful. The, the process of using Social Explorer is so um, easy, yet allows you to access such uh, current and complicated data that uh, I think it's just obviously a terrific product. The site's very browsable, and I think especially the new version is even more inviting to that browsing, and so you can really kind of dig into different categories of data, whether it be by income or race or sex or age, or in all different slices within those. Uh, underneath the income category, for instance, there's just income by age, income by education, um, income by race, just a whole number of ways to slice the income data in, in different ways. So it's a really rich resource there and that's, that's been really valuable. And inviting people to kind of explore themselves a little bit around um, really kind of helps people become more comfortable with Social Explorer and, and, and also sparks a lot of new ideas for ways to use it. The entire technology stack has been changed. Uh, the new technology is completely vector-based and it's taken two years of research to actually build up to the level where the maps are uh, very high quality, very professional, they render quickly, and, uh, and they're interactive, meaning that all the geographies are live. We have a variety of tools for visualizing. We have, we call them data maps, which show shading. So it shows percents of uh, various variables at, at the level, and you can zoom all the way out to the United States and then zoom on down to your own community. Uh, we have a bubble maps now, so you could look at both the percent and the number. We now also support very well uh, what are called dot density maps, so you could look at people and see how they're distributed across the country by dots. Uh, so, so we really have a full range of map visualizations. I have to say, one of my favorite features in um, Social Explorer is the ability to download the raw data. Behind every map is the data is readily available and so you can create your custom maps and it's, it's even easier with the new, the new version of Social Explorer. Right on the map dashboard you can quickly create a report just following a few quick prompts and then click make report and it will pop right out and it's very easy to customize and much more intuitive I think to build the report so that's a nice uh, another enhancement for the system. I think the ability to customize is is what you know the, the real power of the website is and the ability to customize without having to put in the huge learning curve um, part of the you know experience that you face with a lot of other tools. Um, so you're able to provide examples that are relevant to the context in which you're teaching um, in a way that really makes this real. You always want to tell a story with the data. Data in itself isn't interesting unless it's part of a narrative. We're basically creating tools that are, are going to allow users or users to tell a narrative using data.